let's face it, we do eat when we're bored or stressed or anxious. We also eat when we're happy and to celebrate. And so I think, yeah, of course we're emotional eaters. What the real problem is, is if we are turning to food more than half the time to cope with our feelings. Welcome to Exploring Mind and Body with Drew Tadia. Drew is an expert in nutrition, fitness, lifestyle, and more. And he wants to help you live a healthier, longer, and more active life. Now here's your host, Drew Tadia. All right, welcome to another edition of Nationally Syndicated Exploring Mind and Body. Couldn't be more excited to be here with you. Today I'm bringing on Rosalind Fung, who has an interesting story herself and is going to talk about how to embrace your inner badass. (laughs) So we got all these details coming up. Let me tell you about Rosalind real quick. She's a holistic life and business coach. She has a background in, uh, she's a registered psychologist, second degree black belt, so don't mess with her. (laughs) She's certified in eating psychology and uses this this cool transforming, this life transforming method called Heikomi, which she did explain in the past show we did called Body Image. So if you want to head back to Exploring Mind and Body and search for that, you can listen to that complete show. Rosalind also has a very cool video series she's going to offer for free at the end. So stick around for that. And we're also going to get into more content around food, the psychology of eating, habits, finances, and more. So stick around. We got all that coming up. This is Exploring Mind and Body. Naturally improve your lifestyle one show at a time with your host, Drew Tadia. All right, welcome to another edition of Exploring Mind and Body. You heard all about her introduction. So without further ado, welcome to the show, Rosalind. Thank you, Drew. Such a pleasure to have you back on the show. I'm super excited to talk about these topics that we have going on. Rosin, tell us about yourself a bit for some of our listeners that may have may haven't listened to our past show about body image. Yeah, absolutely. So I am a self-love coach for women and entrepreneurs, and um, I have a background as a psychologist for 10 years, and I also have a second degree black belt in karate. So I absolutely know, (laughs) yeah, I know what it takes to develop a mindset to successfully achieve um, goals in life and business. Um, And I'm also certified in eating psychology and this very cool method called Haikomi, which is a mindfulness approach to really digging deeper and shifting those limiting unconscious uh, beliefs that we hold about ourselves. Do you still practice karate? You know, it's been a long time. I got into <laughs> Krav Maga um, oh a couple years ago, and uh, just due to injuries, not from martial arts, um, I've kind of taken a back seat for now. But once you're a martial artist, you're always a martial artist, you're like just in mind, in heart, and in body. Do you know that I can catch flies with my bare hands? No. I can, it's true. That is a fun fact. I want to see that. I want to see you do that on video sometime. <laughs> that might be challenging, but I could try. Then people wouldn't believe it. But it's true. There's flies that fly around the house. You know what the secret? I think I'm part ninja, maybe past life. That really you know, must so. be. <laughs> you know what the trick is to catch flies? You have to try to grab them where you think they're flying to, not where they are. Yeah. You, gotta, you also then got to be kind of psychic. Yeah, well, you you have to know where they're going. Yeah, nice. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, this is going to be fun. All right, Rosalind, I know we got lots to talk about throughout this shorter interview of of our our allotted uh, allotted time here. So let's get Mm -hmm. into it. Tell me about the psychology of food and how we can help our listeners learn about it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm going to start off with perhaps just to help those people who are listening and, and going, what? psychology of food. I work with people who really struggle around food. So they might be yo-yo dieters, um, binge eaters, overeaters. They might even forget to eat because they're just so stressed out. And, um, and, and so this really takes a toll on their 
um, health in, in their mind. Mentally, you're stuck in this trap of, you know, really ri- rigid, restricted eating, weighing, measuring your food. Um, and that's coming from a place of fear, right? Fear base of food, like what I can eat, what I can't eat, how many calories is this? Um, if I eat this, then how much will I need to work out to work it off? It's, it's this constant fear with food and learning. And so what I do is I help people shift out of that and have a very different approach to food. It's a foundation um, of self-love and it's coming and approaching food with love. So it's looking at, okay, let's get you unstuck from this cycle. And so I think what might be helpful is giving some tips, just some really quick tips. So a lot of times when people are really stressed out, food can be really comforting. And I actually don't think anything is wrong with emotional eating because let's face it, we do eat when we're bored or stressed or anxious. We also eat when we're happy and to celebrate. And so I think, yeah, of course we're emotional eaters. What the real problem is, is if we are turning to food more than half the time to cope with our feelings. We can do that, but what are the other options that are non-food related so that you can learn how to emotionally regulate? Food issues are actually not about food. They are actually about emotional regulation. So when we talk about emotional regulation, you mean like how to control those emotions instead of how to control your food? Exactly, exactly. So um, it's like checking in with yourself because your relationship with yourself is the most important um, relationship you'll ever have. And just like think about if your child was really angry and upset Um, how would you support your child in calming down? Because that would be the next step is helping that child go from angry to calm. And so for ourselves, it's about doing the same thing, supporting yourself to go from stressed, overwhelmed, uh, to feeling a lot more calm. And what can we do that around food? Like if we're stressed out and that's, that's mm-hmm. a natural trigger. I mean, I think these are, they're trained, they're conditioned responses to be like, I'm stressed out. I got to have yeah. food. What, yeah. what can we do about that? So I like to suggest a self-soothing bin or basket where you, instead of turning to food, you would turn to this basket. You set it up proactively. Some things that, and everybody's different, right? So some things that you might turn to are in that basket. You would put in essential oils. I think aromatherapy is huge. There's a lot of science around the power of aromatherapy when, because when you take in the smell of essential oils, your olfactory is directly related to your limbic brain, which is your emotional brain. And so scents can really shift things. I would also suggest Insight Timer, which is my favorite app uh, for meditating, um, because meditation can really support you in um, staying in the present moment. When you are stressed, you are your body can't tell the difference between thinking about it versus being there. So even when you come home from work and you're still thinking about all the um, stresses of your day from work and you're carrying that in, your body still thinks you're at work under that pressure. Shifting your mind to go, I'm here, I'm home. And with meditation, it's about focusing on Again, your relationship with yourself, so your breath often and coming inside. And so your your mind now is present to what's going on right here, right now. And that is the quickest way to shift your mood from stressed to calm. So usually when we're stressed out or anxious, we're thinking about the past or the future. Exactly. So mm-hmm. instead of- We're not being present and mindful. Right. So that's something that we can do if we start. Maybe we could use meditation as a conditioned response. Yeah, absolutely. And just, you know what, if I know a lot of people might be like, oh, I don't have time meditating or I don't really like meditating. It's not my thing. It meditation, meditation isn't about just sitting in some Zen position, closing your eyes and and just breathing. It could be a walking meditation. Sometimes people find it very meditative to do that or to run, to move. 
a bath meditation, right? So there's lots of different ways to meditate. So it's about finding what works for you. Yeah, I always say that cooking for me or more so chopping like to me like meditation is just a <gasps> yeah <repetitive>. me too <laughs> i love it drew yes <laughs> i find it really soothing to chop veggies i hear ya. yeah and that's just something simple i think we don't when we hear meditation we hear that we have to sit and be quiet and do nothing but mm-hmm. it's, not, it's not, not not exactly the case you can be active and still be in a meditative state totally like even washing your dishes right that can be meditative it's it's you're just kind of doing this soothing motion. You don't have to think too much about it, but it's like calming your mind. And you're being productive. Exactly. <laughs> that helps too. <laughs> but you know, I find a lot of my clients actually tell me I I forget to breathe. And yes, of course we all breathe because we are still living, but like really breathe. Take those deep belly breaths throughout your day because that's going to help you build your tolerance to your stress levels. Tell me more about self-worth. I want to get into this because I think that in many cases, or I think in most cases, like we we get in in this life what we feel we deserve, I think. Mm -hmm. And many times Mm -hmm. our self-worth is so low, we know Mm -hmm. what, what can we do about it? I want to say I'm going to use self-esteem and self-worth in pretty much interchangeably. A lot of people, I'm going to differentiate this first, Drew, so your listeners can understand. A lot of people get confused um, and think that self-worth is the same as confidence, but they're not. So confidence is about your belief in yourself to do something well. So it's related to usually an activity, Whereas self-worth or self-esteem is about the value you hold of yourself. And so you can have high confidence, but low self-worth. If you have high self-worth, usually you can have high confidence, but again, it depends on the activity. So for example, for myself, I see that I have high self-worth and I'm confident in being able to lead people to love themselves and love their bodies and have food freedom. But am I confident to cut my husband's hair? Oh, hell no, right? (laughs) (laughs) Am I confident to learn how to cut hair? Yes, I am, right? So it's it's differentiating. I hope that helps to differentiate between confidence and self-worth. When we talk about self-worth, what what do you mean when you say that let's say what we're not worthy of something. Would that be fair to exp- how we explain yeah, self-worth? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So a lot of people feel like they're not worthy of um, being financially abundant. Uh, they're not worthy of success. They are not enough. So that they're, what happens on the outside is um, you're manifesting what you're either, usually these are unconscious, but sometimes they're conscious too. these beliefs for the person who doesn't feel like they're enough. What that might look like is you're an overachiever. You think in all or nothing terms, you're always striving when it comes to body image, that perfect body, you don't feel like you have enough degrees. And so you, you're holding yourself back from moving forward in life because of all of these things. I don't look good enough. I'm not skinny enough. I'm not fit enough. I don't have enough education. There is all this negative self-talk happening. And that's like damaging your self-worth. You're not adding to it. Moving towards developing your self-worth is really about changing your how you're talking to yourself. And that has to happen on a conscious level. The first step is always awareness. Like, what is it that I'm really thinking of here? I really believe in the power of being coached. I love being a client. (laughs) (laughs) I always say I'm a student of life first because we have blind spots, right? And when we're working with coaches, then our coaches can help us if they're trained um, to work more on the um, subconscious level. Uh, which is what I do with the Hikomi method. And I can really help people pull out their limiting beliefs. And so we can look at it. Once we're really looking at something, even if it's uncomfortable, it's also really empowering because you give it less power the more you are studying it. It's like, oh, 
this is the thing that's been sabotaging me all along. It's these thoughts. It's these beliefs. Sometimes a show once a week or even twice a week just isn't enough. So if you want more content, if you want to know more about what we're doing at True Form Life, you can find us on Facebook. We're on there posting at least twice a day in the morning and the evening. That's at facebook.com slash trueformlife. We're on Instagram. That's kind of my favorite platform. I like to post my food pictures and some of the activities that I do, maybe hiking or whatever that may be. And that's just at Drew Tadia on Instagram and then Twitter as well. That's at True Form Life. So we're highly active we'd love to connect with you so find us on your social media platform and let us know how you're enjoying our show those like those of our listeners here that want to improve their self-worth if they don't have a coach Mm -hmm. or if they're not working with Mm -hmm. you directly is there anything that you could share with them yeah absolutely so study your patterns study where you are sabotaging yourself so let's let's take a practical example like food again Um, let's say, you know, you turn to food, went to cope with stress or boredom, or when you're tired, you're trying to reach for food for energy, but it just ends up, um, having you feel like crap. So you're sick and tired of that pattern. The way to do that is to study. What is that about for me? I deserve success. And what would success mean to me? Because that's different for everybody. And I want you to write down what your definition of success would be and and break it down into tangible concrete goals so success might be i'm going to learn how to turn to non food soothing activities this week right and to make a conscious effort to do that because it's raising awareness and then it's taking action knowledge isn't power it's about applying that knowledge into action And so taking the action, no matter how hard, no matter how challenging, it's taking yourself out of the uh, unhelpful pattern and creating something new. The first thing we would do is identify. Identify, yeah, awareness. So we need to be aware that we need to make these changes or that we want to make changes. Yes. And then taking action towards it. Exactly. And then reevaluating. So reevaluating either at the end of the day, how'd that go? But give yourself more than just one day because those patterns were there for a really long time on a cellular level. And so it's don't expect it to ha- to change overnight, but it will the more you practice and it becomes more consistent um, and turns into a new habit so that these successful moments then start to appear more often and then eventually they'll start to bleed into each other so that this new pattern now becomes your new normal so that's it's important to just develop those patterns and those habits is do you recommend anything like morning routines is a one of my favorite kind of things yeah mm -hmm, absolutely would you recommend to help re-pattern or to help uh, create rituals to start in the morning I, I personally love that and I do advocate for rituals in the morning. I'm all about responding to yourself first thing in the morning. Lots, and I want to ask your listeners, if you notice, the first thing you do in the morning is check your emails, um, put on the news, you're interacting with something else and you haven't said hello to yourself first, <laughs> if you know what I mean. I'll, I'll explain that a little bit later. But you're now in reaction mode. You're you're just re- reacting to everyone else and everything else around you. Whereas when you wake up and you respond to yourself by doing things that make you feel good. So some of my clients love going for a walk. I personally love doing a HIIT workout in the morning. Um, I love to meditate for 10 minutes and that keeps me grounded so that now I'm ready to take on my day in a kick-ass way, right? The same stressors are going to come to you um, each day. And if you're waking up with all this reaction in your, you know, your busy mind um, and you're reacting to everything versus if you have grounded yourself in whatever way made you feel good, now the same stressors come, your tolerance to stress has uh, been built. And now you can respond more from a deeper, grounded, authentic space. Rosin, tell me more about money mindset. This is interesting to me because I think Mm -hmm. that the majority of us are, you know, credit card debt or have issues with money or we don't feel like that we're worthy enough to have Mm -hmm. abundance in our lives. Mm -hmm. How How does this fit into how you teach? 
Yeah, absolutely. So I love helping women um, really study their own psychology around money. So there is a level of getting educated with how money works. And you can do that through your own financial planner and uh, perhaps your accountants as well and financial coaches. But I deal with the deeper issue with what are the beliefs that come up? And usually it starts from your own money story, which really you learn from uh, usually your family, right? Growing up, how did your parents handle money? What did you see? How did you associate money? Um, was there shame associated with it? For myself personally, there was a lot of guilt associated with money because if I bought something and it wasn't on sale, because we only bought things on sale. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You're not alone, Rosalind. <laughs> right, alone. I know I'm not. <laughs> then, then I would feel totally guilty. And I've I remember like I was, I think like 18 or 20 years old and I was on my own. I was more independent and I would buy something and I would feel so guilty about it. And, I'm, and I wasn't aware that I had this like association of guilt around money yet until I went, oh, it's my mom's voice in my head. And love you, mom. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it, it, it just got instilled in me. And so I consciously went through those steps, just like I did with self-worth, you know, the awareness, then a, a huge part of it is also talking to yourself, telling yourself a new belief. Um, so for me, it was, I deserve to afford, I can afford this, or I deserve to have this for myself. Um, I deserve to feel financially free. Um, and if that's that's a huge jump, I, I recommend saying the affirmation of I am in the process of knowing I deserve financial abundance or whatever the the um, last bit would be for you. So does that make sense? Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. I think there's many of us. I, I could resonate with that. Just, you know, spending money. You don't, you don't spend money. <laughs> mm -hmm, you, mm -hmm. you put it away. Like, you know, that's wasting money. Save and it. as <laughs> yeah, and as somebody who is an expert in the psychology of food and the psychology of money, Drew, it is incredible how paralyzed, uh, not paralyzed, well, paralyzing too, but paralleling um, these patterns can be. So a, maybe a pattern to study and just to look at as an example is um, – if you're a chronic dieter and you restrict and then you binge and then you feel guilty, what's your relationship with money like? Is it similar? It's not always, but sometimes I see it. So people really save, 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 save. And then um, they go on shopping sprees and overspend um, and then they feel guilty about it because it was very impulsive. Both of these are impulsive patterns. So with that guilt for, for me when it comes to food, if someone kind of falls off the wagon or yeah. they, they let into their cravings or peer pressure mm -hmm. to me, I just say, you know, move on, let it go. That guilt does worse than the actual action. What, right. How do you feel about that? I, I think it's about, yeah, taking a step back and having self compassion. That's the biggest piece in healing uh, your own relationship with yourself and those uh, wounds is having that compassion, just like, what we're really doing is working with your inner child, right? And all these beliefs that you as a child learned and you picked up and it formulates these patterns throughout your life. It's about stepping back as an, an adult brain and, and thinking about, okay, let's just have some compassion for my inner child. If that's really hard, think about your loved one. If they, if they did that or said something uh, mean to themselves, what would you say to them? You know, if your child said, oh, I'm fat, or I'm stupid, I'm ugly, would you say, yeah, you are. You better um, go on a diet because that's what we're telling ourselves. And that's clearly not kind. So self-compassion would be, <laughs> you are beautiful as you are. Let's be gentle with yourself. You can, um, you are amazing, right? Saying positive, loving things to yourself. You know, the thing is, is that we say things about ourselves to ourselves that we would never say or think about exactly. anyone. We are, <laughs> we are so harsh on ourselves. It's, it's, uh, it's so sad and unconsciously can seep out in every part of our life. So how you do one part of your life is often how you do all aspects of your life. So it's about paying attention to the deeper, deeper uh, beliefs you have about yourself. 
Desired results are when your conscious brain is matching what's happening unconsciously. And undesired results are, are when those two, the unconscious and unconscious brain are not matching. So like the conscious brain might say, I want to lose weight. Unconscious brain says, I don't deserve success. I'm not good enough. And so it's gonna, that's what keeps the self-sabotaging patterns happening. Okay, Rosalind, before we wrap things up here, I, want, I know you're excited about a new program that you have going on. Yeah, I'm super excited. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Why don't you tell us about that? I've got this upcoming eight-week program, group program. It's a group coaching program, program called Embrace Your Inner Badass. You don't have to change your size to change your life. And so this is all about learning how to shift from not feeling good enough to feeling good enough or just enough to playing small and learning how to play big in your life, play to win, to stop holding yourself back, to stop um, being on the sidelines of your own life and to step into your greatness, like the badass babe that you're meant to be and you actually already are inside but we really need to help help you embrace that part of you your inner badass so that she can come out and play full out so you um yes go ahead i was just gonna say that we went over some like some of these tips or what you call modules um, yes what we went over today and now you have a whole list of them you have at least eight of them that are in this program i do and then there's also a two-day live event it's going to be so fun this is all about creating a sisterhood tribe um so that i think the power of group is amazing drew you can probably appreciate this too um when one person shares something other people in the group will be nodding their heads because even though it's such a personal struggle and wound it's such a collective issue whether it's food or body image uh, money mindset um, putting yourself first learning how to uh, care for yourself without the guilt that is huge for women um and and then also uh, developing a foundation of self-worth so I love group because we're just mirrors to each other and when one person says something and starts to work through their their um negative beliefs the other sisters in the group are supporting but also getting the benefits of shifting their own beliefs in that moment through witnessing so if they want more details about this program in particular they can head over to trueformlife.com slash become a badass <laughs> <laughs> become a badass yeah i love it <laughs> and then so you can find out more details there for our listeners and then they can also opt in to check out the five you put together five free videos to just explain mm -hmm. more about what you have going on yeah each of these videos will explore each of the areas of my program and i give more valuable uh tips three tips each day to work on all right, that's going to wrap things up for this edition of Exploring Mind and Body. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for tuning in and sticking around till the end. I want to thank Rosalind for coming on and offering her valuable insights, expertise, tips, and suggestions. Hopefully, you get a chance to check out her free video series and maybe even sign up for her workshop as well. All kinds of tips and takeaways there. More details as to what we have going on, head over to trueformlife.com. This is where we do nutrition planning, meal planning, fitness fitness routines, and more. We actually have a free 10-day fitness challenge if you're interested in. That's trueformlife.com slash Drew Approved. 10 day challenge we send out a new workout every day for 10 days to get you going in the right direction these workouts take 20 minutes or less so it's a great way to get get in get out and get on with your day boost that metabolism and get you going in the right direction all these past shows are going up on exploringmindandbody.com. So if you ever miss a show or if you want to go back and check out past shows, you can head over to that website. And then again, we did a past show with Rosalind. So that's just called exploringmindandbody.com slash body image with Rosalind Fung. And again, we wish her all the best. We want to thank you for being here. We want to thank all the stations that we are airing on as well. So we so much appreciate their support. And we're hoping that we positively influence their communities' lives as well. We have a free app, free download that you can head over to any Apple store so you can take the show with you wherever you go. I'm going to leave you with that. Once again, thank you so much for being here. That's it. That's all I got. I'm out of here. 
As always, I'm your host, Drew Tadia, in health and fitness for a better world. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to Exploring Mind and Body with True Form Life's Drew Tadia, fitness expert. To find out more about the show, Drew Tadia, or to listen to past shows, visit exploringmindandbody.com.